Hey guys, this is Neil with Catalyst Machine Works, and it is 2020. Can you believe that? I can't believe it. <laughs> Time is going too quickly. But here it is. The racing season is almost here. Uh, it's early March, and we have a new racing frame. Ta-da! This is called the MoFo. And uh, this is a 5-inch racer, and this is the assembly video for the frame itself. I'm not going to get into... Uh, all of the nuance of all of the electronics insulation. I'm going to kind of dis uh, discuss a little bit of what you need to know and what you need to look out for. Uh, but essentially, this is just the assembly video for the frame and, and how to go about that. Before we get into that, I'm going to show you something cool. Turn this scale on. I've got another build over here. This is going to be dry, so it has no battery, but it has everything else you need to get in the air and let's see how much she weighs look at that 231 grams okay now granted these are 2205 motors so small stator motors uh, this is a micro stack nano camera and with this crazy lightweight frame this is a really lightweight build you can even do something more like this which is a much heavier build. Okay, so I've got 2406 motors. These are big bore motors here. Similar in size, a stator size to 2207 as far as stator volume. We've got a full size stack in here. We've got accessories. So we've got a flip stick. We've got an SMA mount. So the kind you can screw and unscrew. All that stuff is, you know, adds up. Got some weight in there. And still, Put this on here. Get some props. One, two, three, and four. Oh, can you see it? Look at that, we're only 281 grams. This is a standard stack in this thing, and big motors. So that's great. That's super lightweight. Let's have a look at this here. This is the frame itself, right at 60 grams. Okay, so I just wanted to give you a, uh, a glimpse at what kind of weight you can achieve with this thing. If you'd like to see a detailed video review of this machine and all of the design aspects and what makes this thing so awesome, uh, our team pilot Ryan Evans did a really good video where he went through everything and I will put a link to that video down below this video. All right, so let's go ahead and get started with the build. All right, let's get started. Let's get this party started. Okay, here's how it's gonna come when you receive it in the mail. All right, in this cool looking bag. And you just rip into it like this. Oh my God, I'm so excited. Right, maybe that's what you do, I don't know. That's what I always do when I get something. I rip into it like a wild animal. Okay, so here's all the parts you're gonna get comes with arms here we'll lay them out like this all right there is your top plate this is called the mid plate this one is the bottom plate you're gonna get a strap right there and a bag of fasteners all right and so what I'm gonna do just move the carbon out of the way. I've got a child's cup here. This can also be used to contain cereal or jello or stuff like that for a child. It is, also has a very uh, it's a very nice apparatus for putting drone fasteners into. So there we go. We've got those all contained. 
So the way that this thing goes together is extremely simple. Um, this is this was designed um, to be very easy to work on in the field and to build up. So this is going to be a short assembly video. There's really not that much to it. Um, the first thing that you want to do is take the mid plate, okay, and stick some arms in here. They slide into these slots. You can see that this carbon fiber plate has some milled features into it, okay? And then on the other side, there are little captive nuts that are impressed in. What you want to do is slide your arms in like so, okay? What I do is usually put two of them in at one time. Then I'll take and sandwich those together with the bottom plate. In here you're going to find some M3 by 16 steel button heads. Okay, run these through. All right. These go in these outer holes here. Through the bottom plate, through the arm, and then through the mid plate. And then on the opposite side, you're going to run your standoffs. These are M3 by 28 millimeter black knurled aluminum standoffs. Okay, tighten those down just like so. All right, like that. Now, you've got a M3 by 10 millimeter button head screw. That one runs through here up to this captive nut. I'm not prepared today. I need a tool. <laughs> I need a tool to finish this off. So let me get one of those and I'll be right back. Tighten this down with some decent force. Don't go so hard that you strip your screw, but get it nice and snug. Okay, that's what it should look like there. All right, now. And we'll go ahead, get the other screws ready. Okay, put these arms in. Now keep in mind, this frame is symmetric front to rear and side to side. So it's, it's symmetric about these two planes here. The front's the back, the back's the front, it really doesn't matter which direction uh, you build this thing in. Same with the arm, same arm can be used in any location. So let's flip it over and put these screws through. We're going to put the other two standoffs on here. There we have it. Okay, when you get this thing tightened up, you should have no movement in the arms. You should be able to take this thing 
and move these, try and try and move these around and you should get no movement in the arms. Okay, if you get any movement, you probably need to tighten these down a bit. You may not be able to completely tighten these down until you put the top plate on. Because what can happen is you can start to tighten these down and get to the point to where it starts to spin this. So it needs something to, uh, to torque against. And so go ahead and put the top plate on before you completely tighten down the bottom screws. Okay, so speaking of screws for the top plate, let's go ahead and put that on. Get those screws out. So these are M3 by 8 millimeter socket head aluminum screws. All right. Put a different driver here. We're using aluminum here to save weight. They're expensive screws, but it's worth it to save them grams. There you go. All right. So after getting it all tightened up, you should have absolutely no movement in these arms. And that's made possible by way of these carbon fiber machine slots in the mid plate. It's a pretty slick design. So we'll go on to the next step. All right, in the kit you're going to receive two camera mounts. These are black TPU camera mounts, looks like this. And I'm going to show you where they're installed here. You can see in this build they are pressed onto the front standoffs like this. Okay, so line them up obviously where the flat portion is against the camera. Now these particular camera mounts that I have in here are optional accessories that are designed for fitting these little nano cams. So this is not a micro, this is a nano. Okay, you can find these little special modified mounts <clears throat> in the accessories section for the MoFo, um, but obviously they work the same way as the standard mounts that come with the kit. And the ones that come in your kit are going to fit a micro camera. Okay, so you can use either a micro camera or a nano camera. There's also going to be some little tiny screws. These are M2 by 4 millimeter, if I'm not mistaken. And you don't need uh, washers or anything. You can just use these and go right through the plastic into the camera and it'll work perfectly. Right. So, next up. Right, the kit also comes with some more of these M3 by 8 millimeter black aluminum screws. There's going to be 12 more of these. Okay, I'm not going to pull them all out, but I'll show you where they're used. So they go through the arms and, in, oops, and into the motor. Okay, you can see them there, pretty self explanatory. All right, so you're not going to use the screws that come with your motors. You're going to want to use what we include in the kit because these arms are 5 millimeter. Um, so you're going to need 8 millimeter long screws and obviously you want to use some lightweight screws so these aluminum are perfect. All right, the next thing that comes in the kit are stack fasteners. So they're all nylon and let me get them out and show you what comes in the kit. So you get these long M3 by 25 millimeter screws. These are nylon plastic. You get some standoffs here. These are male, female, M3, and they've, uh, this big part is six millimeter long. Okay, we've got four nylon nuts 
here, if I can ever actually grab this. Little tiny things here. Okay, and we've got eight of these black washers. Let's see if I can use my sausage fingers to actually get these out of this kid bowl. All right, there you go. And finally, some aluminum washers. These are M3 aluminum washers. Okay. There we go. So, the way that this works, okay, is obviously you take the screw here, you're going to run it through the stack, and you can use obviously a, uh, a micro or a <clears throat> standard size stack. So we're going to run this through here. Okay. Now, there's two options for setting up this stack, and that's why we include these very long screws. All right, if you're wanting to slam your stack, so let's say that you want to fit a lot of stuff in here, well, it might make some sense to slam the stack, and the best way to go about doing that is to use this very long screw. All right, what you'd use is maybe a couple of these little black washers per corner, okay? Put your ESC on, right, like we have here. That's what we've actually done here. So you can see we've got the two black washers. Then we've got the, uh, we've got the all-in-one ESC. Now you can see here I've used these little standoffs, but you don't have to do that. So if you wanted to get less space, if you wanted to quote unquote slam it and get less space between the ESC and the flight controller, you could go and source something else. Now we don't provide that in the kit, but if you want to use you know, a smaller standoff or possibly uh, nylon nuts or whatever you want to use to separate those, you can. Okay, and then put your flight controller on and then finish off with the, uh, with the little nuts here then you can get that stack nice and low. Or what you can do is go ahead and just use this long screw in conjunction with the standoffs. And what you'll want to do is figure out, once you get your stack in here and get your electronics in here, is figure out how much of this nylon screw you're gonna cut off. Okay, so you're not gonna obviously need the entire length of the screw okay in that scenario so you want to figure out where you want to just snip it off and then you'll run your standoff in between the ESC and the flight controller All right this stuff is really soft okay it's nylon so it's easy to cut don't screw it up because <laughs> if you screw it up then your 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 screw is now useless uh, so make sure you cut it in the right spot but that's why these are so long is they're dual purpose okay so you can kind of you can kind of mix and match things to uh, formulate a solution for your stack that's going to work for your specific build. Everybody's builds are different. Everybody's got a different ESC and a different flight controller, and, and everybody wants to assemble all of their components in a different way and put them in there that way. So we tried to facilitate that with these uh, fasteners that we include in the kit. Um, so... There is another thing that I need to point out. All right, you've got these little, oop, okay, here we go. <laughs> you've got these little uh, press nuts that are pressed into this mid plate. Okay, you need to be cognizant of where those are in reference to your ESC. Okay, because your ESC is sitting right on top See if I can turn this thing just so you can see it. The ESC is sitting right on top of these little press nuts. Okay, and obviously these press nuts are made of metal, and you do not want them touching the bottom of your ESC. That is why we include these. So if your particular ESC come to find out that whenever you use two of these little black spacers per corner, that when you put your ESC down on there, it's now hitting the top 
of this press nut, what you can do is use one of these per corner as well, and that should give you enough space to separate the ESC from that little press nut. It works great for us, it should work great for you. That should cover pretty much most builds that you would uh, that you'll be using with this with this frame. Okay, so that pretty much sums up the basics of uh, of this frame. Like I said, it's very simple, and that is by design, right? So now that we're done with that, I'm going to go ahead and talk about the various accessories uh, that we offer and how those are assembled onto the frame. All right, the first accessory I'm going to discuss is the carbon fiber brace. Okay, this is an arm brace that you can use on the front or the rear of the craft. All right, and it's pretty simple. The way it works is instead of using these M3 by 8 millimeter screws, you want to use M3 by 12 millimeter. They are available on our website. They do not come with this brace. You have to buy them. Um, in addition to this, and you'll find a link to those screws on the product page for the brace. And obviously, you run the screws through to mount the brace on like that. Uh, this is a really good option if you want to take a frame that is already very tough and just bring it to the next level of durability. Okay, so that's that. Now, the next option optional accessory that I'll discuss is this here. This is an SMA mount. <clears throat> you can see there's a hole in this. Okay, let me show you what I'm talking about here. I'm talking about this plastic uh, 3D printed TPU part right here. There's a hole for your SMA adapter to come through. Okay, and then you can screw your antenna down to it. There is also this little bore right here uh, that the flip stick is mounted into. It's just pressed into there. Um, this comes with the flip stick. Okay. It also comes with this screw. So this is a little self-tapping screw. What you want to do is basically just take and run the screw through the hole in this plastic part into the flip stick itself. And that and that's going to locate it. It's, it's never going to come out once you put that screw in there. Be careful when you're running the screw in. It Since this is a circle, it's going to tend to want to push into it and then move off to one side. So you really have to center it and go slowly so you get it right through the middle of this thing. Okay. Um, you might want to cut down your flip stick. All right, it comes, it's about this long when you get it. So cut it to whatever length you want and then install it. The last thing that this SMA mount comes with are these little tubes for your antennas. Okay? All right, so the next accessory that I'm gonna discuss is this little guy. Okay, it works similar to this, right? It's pressed onto the two standoffs in the rear. It's gonna come with these little uh, antenna tubes. It's gonna come with all the flip stick uh, the flip stick and the flip stick hardware. Okay. Um, but the way that the flip stick is installed into this one is a bit different. It's not off the back end like this. It actually comes through this hole in the top plate. All right. So you can see when this thing is positioned in here, the hole for the flip stick exists right under this hole in the, uh, in the top plate. So that's how that works. Now the self tapping screw is going to go in this little hole right here. You can see it there. Okay, um, what is the deal with this? It looks kind of weird, doesn't it? Well, the way that this thing works is you take your antenna, okay? Your antenna goes in here like this. You can use a regular size, sort of axi style antenna or a micro. And the uh, pigtail wire runs through this little slot. Then when you take and you press this part up against the top of the bottom plate, it presses against uh, this and it holds the antenna in place and it centers it like this. Okay, that's a pretty, pretty neat idea. <laughs> I didn't come up with this one. This is, uh, this is Ryan Evans that came up with this idea. I really like it. Pretty cool stuff. So I have not had a chance to put this particular accessory on the website yet, but I'll be getting that up shortly.
Another option if you don't want to use that is you can just use a zip tie right here to hold the antenna on. Up to you. Uh, another accessory that I mentioned before are these little mounts for a nano camera. Okay, pretty self-explanatory. They're just, their geometry is a little bit different to hold this smaller camera. All right, my friends, that brings a close to the video. Hopefully I did not bore you too much. Um, if you need any help, you have any questions, feel free to email us at info at catalystmachineworks.com or support at catalystmachineworks.com and we will get you sorted out. Um, I do want to mention that there are some other accessories that I did not discuss. Um, like for instance, we have a series of fixed camera mounts so you can get a fixed position on your camera. Um, and there will be lots of other accessories coming in the near future for this guy. So there we have it. FPV is not a crime.